What's going on gardeners? It's Thursday, December 30th, and it's been unbelievably warm here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Today, I'm gonna to show you all how to take fig cuttings so you get the absolute best quality cuttings possible to maximize your chances of success propagating your fig trees. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. You're support is greatly appreciated. There are thousands of different varieties of fig trees out there in circulation, giving growers one of the widest assortments of fruit tree types and flavor profiles of any fruit tree on the planet. Also, cuttings from fig trees are some of the easiest cuttings to root of any tree. They root quickly and readily without rooting hormone simply by taking cuttings and sticking them in warm, evenly moist soil. It really is that simple to root them, and if you're not sure how, I will link to a video above that shows you how I do it. It's this variety and ease of propagation that make fig cuttings some of the most heavily traded fruit tree cuttings in the world, and it's why they're so valuable to the enormous community of fig growers. Now you may be thinking, why do I need a video that shows me how to take cuttings? Fair point, but there's actually a little more to it than you may think. Ensuring you're taking cuttings from the proper wood, cuttings at the proper size and node quantity, and using the proper tools will greatly increase your chances of success when propagating your fig trees. So I'm going to show you the do's and don'ts of taking fig cuttings so you can maximize your success. There are two tools that every gardener needs before pruning their fruit trees. The first thing they need is a simple pair of shears, a pair of pruners. They're easy to find, pretty much uh, every garden store carries them. The second thing that you need is some type of fine-toothed pruning saw. And for that, I strongly recommend one of these Japanese pool saws. They're absolutely incredible at pruning fruit trees as well as many other activities. I have both of these things linked in my Amazon storefront, but I strongly recommend that you use use one of uh, these Japanese pruning saws, you will not believe how good they are for the price. They are an unbelievable value and everybody should have one of these in their arsenal. Now when you use these tools is very important. Most people will use these hand shears all the time because it's really easy and fast, but you don't want to really use these for wood that's larger than a quarter inch in diameter because these pruners, they'll just crush the wood. For anything larger than a quarter inch in diameter, I strongly recommend that you use one of these pruning saws because the, the actual pruners tend to crush the wood. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Now, earlier in the year, we had a little bit of a mishap around the house where a certain somebody was mowing the lawn and accidentally snapped off a piece of my fig tree. And uh, she will remain nameless. But nevertheless, uh, we had to prune off the broken fig tree. And I lazily used a pair of hand shears to do that. And as you can see, this uh, the wood where the cut was made uh, is just completely destroyed. And I want to show you how that works. I'm going to cut right below it just so you can see what I'm talking about. And what you'll see right here is that there are some uneven ridges in the tree. And as the, as the wood gets thicker and thicker, that, that impact is only going to get worse. And if I cut right below that, you'll see that I actually have some significant damage that is forming in the wood itself. You'll actually see I'm starting to get a little bit of cracking inside the wood right there. Uh, the wood is actually splitting because the, the, uh, the pruners, they just wind up crushing the tree. Now, if I take a handsaw and I just use that instead, what you'll see is that I get a totally different looking cut right there. Now just check out the difference in the wood right here. This right here is the piece of wood that I cut with the saw. This right here is the crushing effect of using that pair of shears on there. And this wood is only about half an inch in diameter, just a little bit more. So that's how much you can damage the wood if you use a pair of pruning shears versus if you were to just buy a nice little hand saw for pruning. The next thing that you want to do is you only want to take cuttings from mature lignified hardwood. And lignification is when the outside of the figs become very brown and that wood becomes very hard. Earlier in the year, the fig wood will be mostly green and very soft. And that wood does not root very well and it's very susceptible to drying out and desiccation if there isn't enough humidity. So I strongly recommend that you only use lignified hardwood cuttings like this wood right here. The outer uh, cover of the wood, that bark that you see right there, should always be a nice dark brown. 
Now it's important to note that some figs have a naturally brighter color than other figs. Like this fig right here is my Martinenka Ramada fig. Uh, the hardwood is a lighter brown than in the last uh, fig variety that I showed you, and that's because this has some green variegated streaking in it. That is completely normal, uh, so just make sure that the fig wood that you're using is just nice, firm, hardwood bark, and it's not any kind of fresh green wood. Now here where I live in North Carolina, we have a nice long warm season and a fairly long growing season. So all of my wood for the most part tends to lignify and become nice hardwood like you see in all the trees in this video. However, if you live in a place with shorter seasons or cooler summers, it is possible that all of your wood may not have lignified. So don't use green wood cuttings, generally speaking, for taking cuttings. The next thing you need to know when it comes to taking cuttings is that you want a minimum of three nodes per each cutting that you take. And this is what a node is. Nodes are the areas of uh, the, the growth points in the wood itself. This is where the buds happen and this is where rooting occurs. So right here is a node, right here is a node, and right here is a node. Now at these nodes, you can see right here that little bump that is a leaf node that will eventually swell into a green bud and produce leaves for you. But all these bumps that you see along the node itself, that is the area where you have the potential for roots to form right there. So you want at least one, two, three nodes. And I like to bury two nodes at least per cutting because if you bury two nodes, that is two potential locations to root. So don't go taking small cuttings that only have one or two nodes. You want at least three because you want at least two buried in the soil medium and you want at least one sticking up above because that is going to be the area you'll get a little bit of bud swell right there where this bud is right there that is what will produce the leaf for you here you can see exactly what i'm talking about we're having such an incredibly warm winter so far that i already have a couple of buds that are starting to break so that right there at the node is what the bud break looks like and then the bumps all at that cut line right there that can be potential roots if they stay moist enough in a nice warm soil medium. Now let's discuss proper cutting length. In my opinion, the best length for your cuttings is in the range of six to 10 inches long with I think that perfect sweet spot number being about eight inches. So when I take cuttings for people and I give them cuttings, I want my cuttings to all be around roughly eight inches, give or take an inch, with at least three nodes on them. So those are my minimum requirements. So right here, I like to take a tape measure. So eight inches would be right about here where my finger is. And you'll see if I were to, you always make your cuts in between the nodes. So if I make the cut right here, I will get one, two, three, four, five, six nodes on that cutting for somebody uh, at about eight to eight and a half inches long. And that, in my opinion, is exactly what you want when it comes to taking a cutting, roughly about eight inches with a minimum three nodes. But if you can get four or five in there, that can be even better. That will allow you to bury two to three and have another two to three protrude out of your pot. So now let's take all of the different lessons that we learned and I'll show you how to take the perfect fig cutting. We're going to start off with my Italian 258 fig tree right here and we're going to measure to six to 10 inches and I'm coming up with eight inches right here at this node. So you never want to cut right through the node when you give someone a cutting, you wanna cut in between the nodes and that's because the bottom little bit will probably dry out some, especially if you ship it to somebody. So always cut it in between the node and then that will actually make the cutting about exactly nine inches. So that's a really nice, generous cutting right there. So then I'm going to take the fine toothed side of my Japanese saw because this, uh, this, this wood right here is easily more than half an inch in diameter. So we don't want to use pruners. Now I'm simply going to cut this. And what we're going to wind up right here is with an absolutely perfect nine inch long cutting with one, two, three, four, five, six nodes on that. So what I would do is, in this case, I would bury one, two, three different nodes in the pot or soil, and then I would let the other 50 to 60% of the cutting stick up above. And that would give ample space for 
uh, your fig cutting to root and ample locations for it to bloom out and form new true leaves. And that right there is the absolute perfect cutting. Now we just have to do one more thing. And to label the cuttings, we're just gonna use one of these Sharpie paint pens. If you need them, I have them linked in my Amazon storefront. Alternatively, they sell them at Walmart for a couple bucks if you need them. So uh, they're nice because they can write on cuttings. Uh, so I'm just gonna label this I258. Now I'll know exactly what that cutting is. Uh, so I never lose it when it comes time to actually root it and then label the pot. And that right there are the do's and don'ts of taking fig cuttings. Everyone, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you are notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products I use in my garden, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description. And also check out my spread shop while you're there for some custom made merch if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks again so much for watching, and we hope to see all of you again on the next video. Why did I buy this thing? It's so loud, but he loves it. Dale, don't destroy it. You gotta be a little more gentle with that, buddy. If you destroy it, you're not gonna get another one. Except you probably will. <laughs>